All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, earlier today, we issued the following statement on the attack on an education center in Kabul. The Secretary General condemns in the strongest terms the suicide attack yesterday on an education center in Kabul. According to reports, many of the victims at the co-educational facility were students under the age of 18. Those responsible for this heinous attack must be held accountable. The targeting of civilians, in particular children, is unacceptable. The Secretary General conveys his deepest sympathies to the government of Afghanistan and condolences to the families of the victims and wishes a swift recovery to the injured. Last night, we issued a statement in which the Secretary General conveyed his condolences to the families who have suffered from the recent Taliban attacks in Ghazni. The Secretary General stresses the urgent need for an immediate ceasefire and the opening of talks between the parties to the conflict to negotiate a sustainable peace. The targeting of civilians and of civilian facilities are clear violations of international humanitarian law. The warring parties must do everything feasible to ensure that no civilians are further killed or injured by the fighting and must allow and facilitate rapid and unimpeded passage of humanitarian assistance so that it can reach Ghazni. The Secretary General once again stresses that there can be no military solution to the conflict in Afghanistan and urgently calls for a peaceful settlement of the conflict in the interests of building a more, sustain a more sustainable and prosperous future for all Afghans. In a statement we issued yesterday afternoon, the Secretary General welcomed the Israeli decision to reopen the Kerem Shalom crossing to its full operating capacity and to expand the fishing zone off the coast of Gaza. He's encouraged to see that those concerned have responded to calls to avoid the devastating impact of yet another conflict on the civilian population in and around Gaza. The Secretary General calls on all parties to support the efforts of UN Special Coordinator Nikolai Mladenov and Egypt to avoid an escalation and address all humanitarian issues in Gaza and the return of the Palestinian Authority to Gaza. The Commissioner General of the UN Relief and Works Agency for Palestine Refugees, Pierre Crayon-Boul, today announced in Amman that the school year for 526,000 Palestine refugee girls and boys will open on time in the West Bank, including East Jerusalem, Gaza, Jordan, Lebanon, and Syria. Mr. Crayon-Boul also underlined the on ongoing severe risks facing the agency saying that UNRWA is by no stretch of the imagination out of the woods. Since January 2018, he said, UNRWA has mobilized $238 million of additional funding, which is very encouraging. However, the agency currently only has funding to run its services until the end of September, and it needs a further $217 million to ensure that the schools can be run until the end of the year. Mr. Koyambul confirmed that UNRWA will take ongoing robust measures to safeguard the financial situation of the agency, focusing on reform initiatives and the identification of efficiencies. He reaffirmed the agency's deep commitment to preserving the dignity of Palestine refugees, its service, and its important mandate. The United Nations is concerned about the safety and protection of civilians in Syria's rural Der Azur governorate, where fighting in Hajin and Dashisha have reportedly displaced more than 20,000 people since July. Internally displaced people have reportedly settled in makeshift camps in the governorate and are in urgent need of humanitarian assistance. While humanitarian organizations are able to access some displacement camps, other camps have yet to receive humanitarian assistance. About 10 international non-governmental organizations and the Syrian Arab Red Crescent are providing assistance, including food, hygiene, health, cash, early recovery and protection services in the different areas hosting displaced people. The UN continues to call on all parties to ensure safe access for humanitarian aid workers to reach people in need and to protect civilians and civilian infrastructure in line with international humanitarian and human rights law. In Mali, the UN mission there, MINUSMA, reports that the provisional results of the runoff of the 2018 presidential election were published by the Ministry of Territorial Administration and Decentralization this morning. The incumbent, Ibrahim Boubacar Keita, came first with 67.17%, while his main challenger, Sumela Sisse, obtained 32.83%. Voter turnout stands at 34.54%. Pursuant to the law, the final results will be published by the 20th of August by the Constitutional Court. The international community stands with Malians across the political spectrum who are working together to advance democracy, build prosperity, and strengthen governance and security in their country. The UN mission in Mali will continue to work with the elected government of Mali for lasting peace and security throughout the country. I also want to flag that yesterday, the Secretary General spoke by phone with both Ibrahim Boubacar Keita and Sumela Sisse. And I just wanted to flag the work of the UN mission in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, MONUSCO, regarding the Ebola outbreak in the North Kivu province. 
Our peacekeeping colleagues tell us that the UN mission is providing logistical support to the Ministry of Health and its partners in order to facilitate operations on the ground. In Beni, an emergency operations center is being established in MONUSCO facilities to host the personnel from the Ministry of Health and other partners leading the response. The mission has also provided containers to the World Health Organization for use as storage. Over the past week, the mission has flown 30 experts dispatched by WHO to Goma and Beni, as well as seven tons of cargo, including medical personnel, pr protective equipment from the capital, Kinshasa, to Beni. MONUSCO has also moved three ambulances from Kinshasa to Goma by air and onward by road to Beni. In addition, the MONUSCO force is ensuring security for humanitarian workers deployed in the affected areas. The Special Advisor on the Prevention of Genocide, Adama Jeng, said he was concerned by the recent de decision by the Republika Srpska National Assembly to revoke its endorsement of the 2004 Srebrenica Commission report. Mr. Jeng said that the rejection of the Commission's findings is a step backwards for Bosnia and Herzegovina. It undermines the rule of law and national and international efforts to achieve justice for victims of crimes committed against people of all ethnicities during the 1992 to 1995 Bosnian War. In addition, he said that given the timing of the decision, it is likely to exacerbate tensions ahead of the October 7th elections and damage prospects for long-term stability and reconciliation. Mr. Jiang's full statement is online and in our office. According to UNICEF report released today, children in Central America who have been deported from Mexico and the United States are at great risk of violence, stigma, and deprivation, worsening the root causes of irregular migration in the region. The report shows that dangerous journeys and de deportations intensify poverty, extreme violence, and lack of opportunity, as it's common that children who are sent back to their countries of origin have no home to return to, end up deep in debt, or are targeted by gangs. Being returned to impossible situations makes it more likely that they will migrate again, the agency said. More than 68,000 migrant children were detained in Mexico between 2016 and April 2018. 91% of whom were deported to Central America. UNICEF urged governments to work together in implementing solutions shown to uh, help alleviate the root causes of regular enforced migration and safeguard the well-being of refugee and migrant children along the journey. The report also outlines a series of recommendations to keep refugee and migrant children safe and reduce the factors that push families and children to leave their homes in search of safety or a more hopeful future via irregular and dangerous migration routes. The full report is on UNICEF's website. As part of our commemoration of World Humanitarian Day, which falls this year on Sunday, the Secretary General will lay a wreath tomorrow morning in observance of the 15th anniversary of the bombing of the United Nations headquarters in Baghdad. We will also have a moment of silence for our fallen staff. There will also be a ceremony tomorrow in Geneva, which will include family members of staff who died in the attacks in Baghdad and Algiers. That's it for me. Are there any questions? Yes, Nisar. Uh, thank you, Farhan. Uh, do you have an update about uh, any breakthrough in the Yemeni negotiations? Uh, there's no, um, there's no particular breakthrough to uh, uh, cite at this point. We continue with our efforts. As you know, the special envoy Martin Griffiths has been in dialogue with the parties, and we do expect uh, that in the coming days, uh, he and his team will be uh, prepared uh, to send out uh, the invitations for the parties to attend the talks. Uh, in Geneva next month. Uh, staying on the same subject, uh, the authorities in Sana'a declared that the truce in the western coast is over and uh, hostilities will resume there after one month of uh, kind of uh, cessation of hostilities. Is there any comment about that? Well, we again call upon all sides to avoid any further confrontation, any further provocations. What we are trying to do is have a, a permanent halt to the fighting and a return of the parties uh, to the table, which, uh, as I just mentioned, we are trying to do next month in Geneva. So we would call upon all parties uh, uh, and all those in contact with the, the, the parties to the conflict uh, to avoid any further escalation. Uh, do you have any statement regarding the fire brigade, which is outside the United Nations and entered in the premises? Do you have any clarifications about well, what's happening? Yes. What, what I can tell you is that the Fire Department of New York is presently on the premises of the UN. Uh, this is because of a, malfunct a malfunctioning apparatus uh, that was being used by window washers on the East River side of, of the UN headquarters building. 
Uh, there's no injuries, and we expect the matter to be resolved shortly. Uh, uh, it's the apparatus, as, as you know, when window washers go outside to wash the windows, they have a, a certain apparatus that helps them lower them and raise them across floors, and one of those is malfunctioning right now. Yes. Uh, Farhan, thank you. It's for CGTN Nairobi Bureau. Um, Médecins Sans Frontières is getting increasingly worried about the number of reports that they're getting about torture and rapes and mistreatment of migrants in Libya. And we know that the United Nations has made a great effort to remove migrants from Libya and get them back to their home countries to stop them having to cross the Mediterranean. Does the Secretary General have any comment on this anxiety from Médecins Sans Frontières about the increase in torture, rape, and proddings with metal? Well, uh, our, our basic concern, uh, as, as you're aware, is that we believe that, uh, that uh, the conditions in, in Libya are not uh, such that uh, migrants can be... Uh, safely placed there. And so we have called upon all of the uh, countries uh, in the region, uh, the countries uh, dealing with the Mediterranean Sea, to do their utmost so that, uh, that migrants and refugees can be uh, uh, held safely in places outside of Libya. And so uh, uh, we've been working with them, particularly through our colleagues in the UN Refugee Agency, UNHCR, and the International Organization for Migration, IOM. And, uh, and we're trying to make sure that, uh, uh, that the countries uh, who deal with the Mediterranean Sea can cooperate to, so that uh, the safety and the dignity of uh, these migrants will be respected and, and that they can be uh, kept in, sa in safe conditions. I mean, just, just briefly, does the UN think that the effort has failed then? No, I, I, we believe that the effort is ongoing. Uh, obviously, m more needs to be done, and uh, we're working uh, with the, the governments to make sure that... Uh, that more is done. There has been some progress with uh, countries trying to cooperate to place uh, some refugees and migrants out of harm's way, and we certainly appreciate the efforts that have already uh, been undertaken, but, but we're trying to get more done. Yes. What's the report on migrant children? And could you step a little closer to the mic? <laughs> One misses every other word. I, I, can, I can lower this if that makes it better. Yeah, but, that's very good. Uh, but... Um, uh, the report is a report that uh, the UN Children's Fund, UNICEF, released today. Uh, this is uh, focusing particularly on migrant children uh, in Central America who have been deported either from Mexico or the U.S. Yes. Okay. And secondly, um, the Srebrenica statement, why should anyone care? What's, what's the significance? Is Belgrade involved? Well, I mean, we... we we told you in the press release from Adama Jeng what the significance is. We want to make sure that uh, the rule of law is upheld, and we do not want uh, tensions to be exacerbated ahead of the 7th of October elections. At the same time, um, one of the points is uh, that we also want the basic truth and the basic facts of the matter to be upheld. Uh, two international courts, as you're aware, the International Court of Justice and the International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia have determined that the massacre of Bosnian Muslims in Srebrenica constituted genocide. And we want uh, all uh, authorities, all governments to respect that. Uh, yes, please. Uh, uh, thank you, Farhan. Uh, I uh, wondering about uh, yesterday's question about the letter of two U.S. Senators, uh, Rubio and Kunz, to the uh, Secretary General about the killing of Russian journalists in the Central African Republic, if you maybe remember. They sent a letter to the uh, Secretary General. So did you receive the letter and um, what is going yeah. to be further with it? Yeah. Regarding that, uh, yes, uh, we, will, uh, we will try to respond uh, to the letter in due course. As, as you're aware, uh, the UN mission in the Central African Republic, MINUSCA, uh, has been uh, working uh, uh, to help uh, with this investigation, and we hope that we will uh, uh, be able, uh, uh, working alongside the local authorities, to, to uh, get to the bottom of what's happened uh, to these journalists. Uh, and, of course, you've seen what we've said in the past about this. And with that, have a good, have a good weekend, and welcome back. <laughs>